The following is a hoop ball presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. Hello and welcome to Fantasy NBA Today for June twenty seventh, two thousand nineteen. My name is Neil Rochlani. I'm here with Josh Millman. To talk about all the free agency rumors, innuendo, buzz, and what that potentially means for fantasy. Josh, how are you doing this morning? I'm all right, buddy. It's been a while. Glad it's, you're feeling better. Yes. Be here. I am not dying, which is a good thing for me. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're alive and well to talk about. Yes, uh, I'm alive and well. And uh, not, not a lot of hard news going on right now. Well, I guess a little bit, but nothing that we can really – pinpoint fantasy implications on just yet we're sort of in that um wait and see mode for free agency and then we get more clarity on where these rosters kind of shake out so today's gonna be just a little bit of speculation um i guess all sort of fantasy prognostication is speculation in some form so dude i love i love gossip i love rumors and you reference innuendo, but unfortunately, I do love innuendo as well. You lost your phone sex operator voice, so it, it, <laughs> it uses a little bit of its luster. But that's all good. Let's, dude, let's just speculate. Let's have fun with this because, yeah, there are a lot of just basketball implications, you know, both fantasy and reality for just the madness that's going to descend upon us in a few days. And before we do that, I will be scolded if I don't mention we are sponsored by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee. Uh, Josh, do you drink their products? I no, so I I, I want to. The problem is, is that I no no no, no and I, I dude, I love their products, but like I want yeah. I had the, the reason why I love them is that they're trophies for me. Like oh. I dominated DFS, so I have bags of uh, of Kona coffee that yeah. I'm just that I I have on a mantle, and I just like my wife's like, dude, what, what's with all the the coffee bags? I'm like, those are my trophies, baby. Like, <laughs> So I, I, I love the coffee just from a, a sheer visual perspective in my house. Fantastic. I I um have not received trophies. I did get a couple of free samples, which I am uh I'm not a coffee maker, so that's the problem. But uh, gotcha. I'm sure if I drank them they would be delicious. No, uh, anyway. I need I need yeah, I need a, like a like a, a coffee maker in my house. So that's the next step. So so Kona, if you're listening, coffee maker and then we're all good. <laughs> yes, but if you are a coffee drinker, please check out their products at HawaiianIos.com or on Amazon.com. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I before we started, Josh, I, I threw out about a eight or nine names here. Do you that we've that I've seen a little bit of news on? I'm trying to like thought we could go full conspiracy theory and all these guys. Um, <laughs> Where do you, or full speculation, I should say, because we are going off hard news, but then trying to figure out what that might mean based on, I guess, our interpretation of it or what we can kind of rule in or rule out. Um, where do you do you have a player you want to start with? Uh, no, let's start at the top. Let's go. Well, so the one player. I think he's going to be, you know, I, I think right now, to me, the biggest domino to, to, to really fall. Let's start with, with Kawhi Leonard. Mm. Because, I, I, you know, Durant's, you know, not that he's harder to gauge, but, like, the injury obviously throw it into some flux. But, you know, it, it seems like right now it's down to three teams for Durant, it seems. It's, it's, it's he goes back to the Warriors – or it's the Knicks or the Nets. And whereas Kawhi, it, it's, there's, maybe there's a little bit more uh, you know, chance for a curveball because it's Kawhi and no one knows what he's thinking. Um, so uh, let, let's, let's start with Kawhi. Let, let, let's go there and, and see how, we, uh, how this all shakes out. All right. So my – yeah, when the season ended and I saw his press conference uh, right after the finals, I thought he was gone from Toronto. Yeah. That was my first impression. What I'm reading now is he uh, obviously opted out, but I think he might do a one and one with Toronto. Um, yeah. That's kind of the um, you know one-year sign and one-year player option. Right. I think right. that's the um, the latest news as well, So or the latest rumor. Yeah. Um, I'm, still, I'm still leaning that he opts out. 
and go, I mean, he leaves Toronto and goes yeah. to uh, um, the Clippers. Right. And first of all, are you on the same page with me on that, or what do you well, think might happen? So I'm actually, I actually think that that one in one option is looking increasingly like the move okay. for Kawhi. And so I, I'm thinking about this also from a fantasy perspective because if anyone's followed me on Twitter uh, over the course of the, the fantasy basketball season, you know that I had a very love-hate relationship with Kawhi Leonard. He was on a couple of my teams, and it was both – fun and maddening experience all at the same time because he played in 60 games last year, Mm. 60 games. And that as a fantasy player is awful because you know that he's a top five, top six, whatever it was like type of production player when he's on the floor, except he was hardly on the floor. He missed a quarter of the season. And, but he, what he said was, that like he was in sync with Toronto's medical staff and their training staff and their coaching staff. And he felt like, you know what, not having to play all those back to backs and being able to have that time off really, really helped him in the postseason. And he was a monster in the postseason. So I I'm I think I'm speculating right now. And here's the other thing that I'm thinking about is that Toronto is going to have another major decision to make a year from now with Pascal Siakam. And, you know, these guys with, with Mark Gasol opting in, which makes sense, you know, that let's run it back another year because we know that we have a championship caliber team. The Warriors have basically fallen apart. And probably, like we, we you know, they're going to have the same uh, same team essentially that they just beat in the finals because they're really not going to have Clay, uh, Clay Thompson for the majority of the year. There's the possibility that Durant is gone as well. So why not run it back? He seemed to really like Toronto, and oh, and I'll just get a Max deal somewhere else next year if I really want to go back. I thought, like you thought at the beginning of the year, Kawhi's a West Coast guy. You know, he'll go back to L.A. The, I thought it was 100% certainty, like you said, that he was gone to the Clippers, you know, at, at like by the end of this season. But now I'm not so sure because I think that he really had a great season there. I think he warmed up to Toronto and the fans and that they really gave him the keys to the car, if you will, and let him sit all those games. And I think he appreciated that. So I wouldn't be shocked if they, he did that one and one just ran it back and then just decided when Gasol was gone and they needed to re-up Siakam that he would, you know, head back to L.A. Yeah, I think um, that uh, move is looking, like you said, more and more likely. Um, so it, you may be right, and I'm willing to kind of um, – backtrack and agree with you now <laughs> but <laughs> i'm let, that convincing you're huh? that convincing but let's wow. say this so if leonard goes back tr- to toronto are you expecting another 60 yeah. game season yeah i think i think that they're i think <clears throat> where Kawhi ends up is going to have massive fantasy implications uh, you know he's going to be a difficult player to peg because again you know what he's capable of in individual games. But the problem is, is if, if you, if you're setting weekly lineups, dude, that's, that's miserable to have to put a guy in who's playing two games at most during a week, you know, and, and that that's hard to justify like with, with weekly lineup daily is a little bit different. You know, you can make those adjustments, so it's not that bad. So I would, you know, be mindful if you're staring down Kawhi and it's probably the, you know, just because of the nature of games played, that you know, uh, he he probably ends up in like the second round, you know, versus versus the first where he should be going if he th- if everyone thought he would play a full slate of games, you know, just be mindful of your league and your format and when when, when deciding to pull the trigger on him depending on where he goes. Yeah, I know. I uh, I think he might be overvalued because of that. I think a, a lot a lot of stars are probably going to get more rest next season, seeing the Kawhi model mm-hmm. uh, of resting a little more in the regular season and, and then being able to go full full board for the playoffs. So that might happen with other superstars, but I think Kawhi 
is one you can almost guarantee that's going to happen again. Yeah. So I want to, so like just, I want just, you know, real quick, like one piece of news, and we didn't discuss this when we were, we were figuring out this pod, but like one piece of news that came up actually that this, this to me has significant fantasy implications and we're, and we're not really discussing it is that Adam Silver came out and was basically, and basically said, we're going to tweak the schedule somehow. It, what it's shortening games or play or potentially playing like a mid season style tournament. Uh, and it's, the, the, it's probably not going to happen for a couple years, but like they're eyeing down the road. And, and I think of this and, and I, I think it's a good transition from Kawhi just because, you know, these guys are resting more and the NBA is a business is seeing like, look, guys need more time off or they're going to take more time off. So we need to figure out a way to either, you know, to make sure that ownerships are satisfied because there's, you know, ticket sales and that kind of revenue. And, but on the fantasy side, it's, we're going to have to make adjustments to the games we play and the leagues that we run. If the NBA schedule goes through this wholesale change, because you know, that just because players have just, pretty much universally decided that they're not going to like 82 games is, is just too much over the course of the season. Yeah. Especially anyone of significance for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. I don't know what's going to happen. It seems like though, that's like, that could be a snowball in effect. You know, like no matter how many games you reduce, the players are going to all still want to play less. You know what <laughs> well, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So just to re- so I don't know how you solve that. That seems, Let's see. I didn't mean to throw the curveball at no, you. No, like, no, no, no. I was just, thinking that. Let's, so let's say they go down. Let's just say I don't know how they do that with all the ownership, obviously losing all that revenue. Um, yeah. Like you lose, let's say, hypothetically, 10 games a season. Right. Would Kawhi – I mean, would Star still play sep- like 68 to 70 games? And that can, or would they go down to 62? I don't I – don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. It's like, I, you know, I'm sure the league – and all the geniuses that work there can figure this stuff out. But it's, you know, I, I'm thinking of it from, again, like guys like Kawhi want the time off. Guys like, you know, like the Warriors in there, you know, when when they didn't need to trot out their full their full strength team when they were beating up on patsies throughout the regular season so that they could be full strength for, for the playoffs. I, I think that's been the common trend. And I think the league is trying to respond to that trend, but also they have to think of it from a business standpoint. And it's, you know, if, if someone's paying money to see Kawhi Leonard or Steph Curry or whoever it may be that like, they, you know, they don't want it to be like, Oh, at, you know, right at the start of the games, they're just deciding, yeah, you know, it's a rest day for these guys, you know, so we're just not going to play them. So, you know, it's going to have a massive ripple effect on the league, on fantasy sports in general. And, and that's, you know, something that we're, you know, it's on the horizon. I, I want to get back to speculating about where everyone goes <laughs> because that, that's going to be infinitely more fun. But just there's like something on the horizon coming that we're going to all have to respond to at a certain point. Yeah, you're right. I think there is going to be a shakeup. In that, that midseason tournament, that, I guess let's just put that on hold because that sounds crazy. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Good gambling fun. I, I, I'm, that's <laughs> Bet your best brisk will eat that up. So. Uh, you probably will. All yes. right. I wanted so the second guy I had on my list, but it was Kevin Durant. But now that I'm thinking about it, there's probably no fantasy implication in, in the sense yeah, that he's he, not going to play next year, right? He's not playing next. I can't yeah. imagine. I think you know. I'll just look. I, I I am a Nets fan. For those that know oh, me, okay. So I I am just so cautiously optimistic about all of this, like because I, you know, as a Nets fan, I've had the rug pulled out from under me way too many times. But you know, if yeah, I think any team getting Kevin Durant is getting the cachet of Kevin Durant, and hopefully they get like a player coach at thirty something million dollars the first year of his contract, and and then thereafter. Look what you know. What are you hoping for? Eighty percent of Kevin Durant, ninety percent of Kevin Durant. Mm. You know that that's still an excellent NBA player, and right. it, you know. So I, I, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, you know, but I think it's down to three teams. I think it's it's he either goes back to the Warriors uh, on the on the supermax, or he's going to the Knicks or the Nets. Mm. I, I I think that's it. 
Yeah, I thought the Knicks were a done deal about three months ago, and now it's looking Same. like it's it's um it's not necessarily the case. So we'll see. Um, all right, so no implications there fantasy wise since he's not going to be playing next season, no matter where he goes. I don't think it really yep. matters for him. It would just matter for the players around him. But uh, who's who's number? Who's the third player you want to talk about? Um, well, well, let's talk about the hot name. Let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about the hot name in the rumor mill right now. Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what? Yeah, what I'm reading is that uh, you know there was first those news he would take less money in Charlotte, so it looked like perhaps he was going to stick around. Now it looks like. The talks are not necessarily going as smoothly as thought of, so perhaps he ends up elsewhere. Where do you think he stays in Charlotte, or you think he's gone? Um, I think he's gone. Okay. Um, and I think that it, you know, I'll, I buy the the Boston rumors right mm. now, but I actually think that you know where he should go, and I think this is. I mean, it won't happen. Eh, not that he should go because they just drafted RJ Barrett, but I think the Knicks like. You know, just because he's a New York guy, I thought that would have made sense. You know, but like they're not gonna like I, it would be such a Knicks move to sign him and just completely stunt RJ Barrett's development, um, which would be just you know the most classic Knicks thing you can do ever. But Kemba Walker's great, and and you know he just I, I just remember him. He did, like loved playing in the Garden, like back from his UConn days. Um, so New, uh, New York kid growing up so i thought like you know that would be where he would end up especially if the knicks just if they end up striking out on all these big names that just throw a max deal at kemba walker because why not and maybe you know maybe fizzdale figures out a way to to play rj barrett and kemba walker together Mm -hmm. um i i I have my doubts about that because it's david fizzdale Mm -hmm. um but uh you know that that to me i I wouldn't i wouldn't rule that out especially if the relationship with charlotte is starting to sour do you think um his fantasy impact is his fantasy value changes if he goes somewhere else uh yeah i think so Uh, i think i think the value kind of i think his value depresses i mean he came out like he was on a fire to start the year last year um and I think that any type of – like, he was the guy in in Charlotte. I think if he goes to the Knicks, he'd still be the guy. And I think his value going from really one bad team with limited offensive options to another bad team with limited offensive options, it's probably like his, – his value probably, I would say, stagnates. Okay. Where he's kind of in that I, – I don't even remember where he finished – like top 20, top 25-ish – range um if he goes to boston though that's a different story Mm -hmm. um because he's going to have to be more of a facilitator you know with guys like tatum and jalen brown and gordon hayward um you know so that may help him in these this category but i can't imagine him being like a forced scorer like he like he was in his charlotte days so there's going to be some hits potentially in points and three pointers um, I, he's definitely still an early round pick no matter what, but I think that, yeah, depending on where he goes, I think Boston depresses his value a little bit, but I think if he goes to the Knicks or stays in Charlotte, I think his va- fantasy value stays relatively intact. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously Boston would be the much bigger hit. I still think even if he goes to New York, he's going to lose some value. I just think he scored so much last year. Um, hmm. If he goes anywhere else, there'll be more scores around him. I can't see there being fewer scores, but perhaps we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, just I look again. I thought that that like at this, if you were to ask me, and and the other team we really haven't mentioned also are the Lakers because they were in the rumor mill early as well, and now they're smitten with D'Angelo Russell, and you know, the, the, if he goes there, then his then his fantasy value is really taking a hit. Because yeah. you know, th- then you're playing third banana to LeBron and, and Anthony Davis. Yeah, I don't think he really wants that. I don't I, think he wants it either. Yeah. I don't think he wants to be the third third best player on the team with right. third option. So I don't think he goes there because of that. But right. it is Los Angeles, you know, and it is a chance to win a championship. A chance to play with LeBron and yeah. Anthony Davis in yeah. what in what's now a, a wide open West. Exactly. Um, all right. Any more on Kemba Walker before you? Hop no, on. I think I think that's good for now. Like again, let's just you know, let's just make shit up. Let's let's just you know, <laughs> who cares? You know, uh, <laughs> the news. All right, so this is more of a uh, just a random injury related news, not injury 
news, but related news. Uh, Paul George might miss preseason. Um, does that scare you in drafting him? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. And I've got I, – I love Paul George was amazing last year. Um, I had him in a, a dynasty league that I do with the friends league that I finally won for the first time. And oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank That's you. Fantastic. So, um, I, I'm very, I, I have to decide it's a salary cap league. So I have to decide whether or not I want to hold on to Paul George at a lofty price. And I want to, but now I have to wait and see like how his shoulder responds and, and and if he's if he's really going to be healthy, my fear is is that like they say now that he's going to miss all of preseason, mm-hmm. and then we're going to hear something in October, you know, when I have to make the decision that like well he's still not ready and he's probably going to miss a week or two of the season. And there's always this snowball effect with with in, with injuries like that. Like you can't rush a shoulder injury for a shooter it's it's plain and simple and he his shoulder was definitely banged up later in the season and like he wasn't near like his his efficiency was off in in the latter part and i'm sure that was due to the injury so i i don't think that okc is going to want to risk that you know having a having less than 100 percent paul george at their side yeah they're not going to push him and he may get a lot of rest. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm really, really worried about that. I'm very concerned about his fantasy value. Yeah, because uh, like you said, the West is wide open, and there's no there's no reason they couldn't be you know in the mix to come out of there. Uh, exactly. So, but I, I think he's well, I think he in early early mocks that I've seen online, he's he's a top five, top six pick. Uh, that's a massive gamble. Yes. Massive. I would not take him the first round. Yeah, uh, that's a massive gamble. <clears throat> yeah, I might need. We'll see. Yeah, you're right. If he is not playing by the time I do my draft, I probably would just avoid him completely. Uh, I, I he's uh, it, but at, at the same time, the flip side of that coin is is perhaps there's a discount built in because if Paul George slides to the second round, yeah, you know, and and all things being equal, it's like oh he just missed his training camp and oh yeah we just kept him out of training camp so he's fine but he's fine for games. Then you you got yourself a steal in the second round. Yeah, my draft strategy though, I tend to the first three picks I tend to be risk averse. Fair enough. I don't want to lose it in the first three picks. I agree. So I I'm very um, cautious. Gotcha. Um, so anyone with an injury, I'm going to hold off on because if I'm whiff on one of those three, I think it's so hard to come back. I'd rather be, I, yeah. I'd rather be off by a round. You know, a guy maybe than a guy who to- to- totally is. Um, unplayable or something because he's hurt. So I think it goes back to that games argument where we just had. You just yeah. got sometimes you just got to go with the sure thing. And if you're staring down, you know Paul George or even you know someone who's going to go early like a Bradley Beal even. Right. You I know, would definitely like take Beal over. If, really? if George okay. is hurt, if, no, if George okay. is not playing, if George is not, playing. Got, no, I got, if if we know for sure that like George is going to miss a game or two early on, I think that's a big difference. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, where do you want to go next? Uh, let's go with Boogie Cousins. Boogie Cousins. So rumors that he may go to the Knicks if they don't get Durant. <laughs> Is that what you saw too? I saw that. I, I, I the the Knicks are just hysterical, man. I, they, I just I know they are hysterical, and I I love like NBA Twitter because. You go on and, you know, yeah, three months ago, the, it, you know, everything was like the Knicks are going to get, you know, the number one pick, you know, <laughs> they'll get Zion and then we're going to get Kyrie and then we're going to get and then we're going to get KD and and now they're going to get none of them. And now they're looking at plans C, D, E, F, whatever they are. And like there's DeMarcus Cousins, there's Julius Randle that they're talking about. Now, mind you, like I don't mind either of those players on the Knicks, actually. Like that's the kind of the sad part. But like it, it, the, the, to me, it's just hysterical that like they're already on like their, their fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth options 
when they were like ready to push their their chips all in in this off season. It is so so sad to watch <laughs> <laughs> because they are they're like a, a destination. You know, yeah. this is not yeah. like you know. I don't know. I don't want to name a team, but you know what I mean. It's it's not only is it New York City. It's the biggest market in the world. Yeah. Um, it's got that great um, mecca for basketball. Great fans. Um, you could be. You can make so much in marketing dollars, advertising outside of it. Um, I know. And they just they're such a dysfunctional franchise. It's a, it's a mess. They can't get. I mean, even if they got cousins, let's say they got cousins in Kemba, and both those guys were healthy. I don't even think they're that good of a team. I know they're they're a six seed in the East. Yeah, I mean it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's the East isn't bad either. It's, yeah, no, but I mean they're know, not they're not coming out. They're not, not better. They're not making it to the Eastern Conference Finals with that. No, so. no, definitely not with that team. No, yeah, and, so. and and even you know when when Sorio did and I did our our you know our nightly you know not our nightly thing like our our weekly. Uh, video things like we were speculating like when like the whole Kyrie KD and Zion like rumors were happening and even that like if we were assuming that you know Milwaukee runs it back and Toronto runs it back and Philadelphia is still intact you know where that Knicks team ended up like if all the chips fell perfectly for the Knicks where that team was and we could not think of them higher than a three seed and Mm -hmm. and and now you're taking such a massive step down from a healthy Kyrie a healthy KD and a Zion to Kemba Walker and DeMarcus (laughs) Cousins and a mishmash of rookies and second year players that we have no idea how how they're going to pan out they are a bottom half of the pl- uh, of the playoff team at best and it, it's just a sad state of affairs man but it's look I, I i think if if on the knicks right now um i actually don't mind julius randall on that team um another name that we really haven't like Oh yeah, spoke, spoken about, but yeah. you know, I, I, you know, there were some rumors about him, you know, having interest in the Knicks and Knicks having interest in him. I actually don't mind that move for them, and I actually think it's a smart move because you could, you know, without throwing a a massive long term commitment at Julius Randle, like get him for like a couple of years for like I don't know forty fifty million dollars, you know, and you still like maintain some cap flexibility. You're still developing Kevin Knox and RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson, but you know, hit, Randall's skill set is much different than Mitchell Robinson's, you know, whereas, you know, Randall can score and he's a great rebounder. Whereas Mitchell Robinson can't, but he's an outstanding defender. Um, so I think they would complement each other pretty well, you know, just from a pure speculation standpoint, let the Knicks win 20, 25 games again, you know, but let Randall try to be like a 25 and 10 guy on a lousy team and, and go from there. That's just, you know, again, me, me just throwing poop at the wall. Yeah. Well, I think if he, I think Randall's gonna have a great year next year, um, wherever he ends up. So excited for his fantasy value. Um, yeah, uh, the Knicks just got me sad. So <laughs> 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 make you sad. They make me happy, man. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Nets, nice dude, yeah. Nets fan here. Like, I, I just think that you know, Knicks. I, I love Knicks fans here. They are some of the most delusional fans that you'll ever meet in your life. <laughs> And just it just to to mock Knicks fans, especially I've got them in my family. I have friends who are Knicks fans. It's just it, it's just I have few pure delights in my life than than watching Knicks fans be miserable. Like that's it. It's I love it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, well. I was going to say something else, but I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Anyway, let's go to wait. Did you pick you pick cousins right? I picked Boogie, yeah. yeah, and then we shifted to Randall. So yeah, two birds, okay. one stone. Got it. Um, all right, Jimmy Butler. Any any, uh, any belief in this rumor that he's he might be going to Houston? I don't think so. 
Yeah. I don't, I don't, um, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that, where that came about, you know, even it, that's just, it feels like such a stretch. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards him going back to Philadelphia. Um, I, I don't know. That team was a Kawhi Leonard shot away mm-hmm. from potentially being in the finals. I mean, I don't know how if they would beat Milwaukee. Milwaukee kind of had their number during the year, but you could have said the same thing about Toronto, mm-hmm. also. And uh, I, I, they were one shot away from winning that series. So, I, I, if why not try to run that team back? Also, I, you know, it's it's another year of development for those guys. And you know, I Jimmy. I, I I was listening to the jump yesterday and it made sense. It was like, you know, let, let Joel Embiid beat some guys up early and then Jimmy can be the closer and that, that they had a good yin and yang thing going there. Um, but I, Jimmy wants to be the guy. Um, I think there might be some potential clashes with Ben Simmons and he's got free agency coming or at least like restricted free agency coming potentially next year. But at the same time, I, you know, that team was razor, a razor, razor thin margin from us having a significant what if conversation. Like, what if that shot didn't go in? What what happens to the Philadelphia 76ers? Um, so I, I'm I'm guessing that that Butler's back in Philadelphia. Um, I think the Houston thing is lunacy. And that that, you know, we can talk about Houston separately, but like that team's kind of a a bit of a disaster in their own right, even though like they've got one of the two best players, basketball players on planet earth right now. Mm. It's, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of nuts that that's like what counts as like a, an actual rumor right now <laughs> in league circles that, that, that Houston's trying to make chicken salad, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of talks about the dysfunction between the players. Um, yeah. I was going to say with Butler, yeah, I don't know if he goes to Houston, but I don't – here's the thing. I don't think he – like you mentioned, he and Simmons don't really complement each other very well. Yeah, yeah. So I think they could roll them both back next year, but I think eventually one of them is going to go. I agree. Um, and I'm not sure who it is and where to, obviously. So, so here, wait, yeah. how about this? Let's, let's have fun. Let's have conspiracy <laughs> theory football uh-huh. here. Let's do it. Do the 76ers trade Ben Simmons? I think they want to. I don't know if they will be able to get back with they. Let's have fun with this. Where <laughs> did Ben Simmons go? Oh boy! How much fun would this be? <laughs> like, they, like, can you imagine? Like, if like like Philly just just shuns Ben Simmons to Phoenix or something like that. Oh my God, that poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, yeah. you know team desperate for some like point guard play and like he ends up in like some basketball wasteland. Yeah. I don't know where the heck he'd go because he's not, he's a great ball handler. He's a, you know, he's great in transition, but he's yeah. just not, he needs the ball in his hands, his hands, but he can't shoot the three. Um, yeah. He just it's, can't it's, shoot, it's, it's just, a, and he's great on D and he's such he's a, such good, a good defender. defender. Yeah. Ooh, no. It's just, it's, it's such a shame. It's just, he has that one gaping flaw in his game, but it's a flaw that, that in the playoffs becomes a massive issue. And I don't, I don't know what, you know, look, there's still, he's still young and there's, it's not as if like there isn't time for him to work through that, but it's just, it's not, it's never going to be where he turns into like a Devin Booker, like that's just not realistic, you know, but, and I only say Devin Booker because that was just my, my pure speculation, but he's an outstanding three point shooter. That's just simply not reality for, for Ben Simmons. Maybe one day he can start to, you know, make one three a game at best, but he's just, it's just not part of his game right now. So there's no reason for NBA defenses to have to worry about him in half court sets. Yeah, and that changes. I mean, everything right now is being able to spread the floor. Yeah, and if you if you're on offense in a half court game and you can't spread the floor, yeah. you become a liability. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't. I think yeah. I, I think he's got. To, he's going to have to really develop I that think shot. If gonna, Jimmy Butler resigns, or there's interest in Jimmy Butler going back to Philadelphia, yeah, I would be like, could you imagine if 
Ben Simmons' name just starts floating in rumor mills out of nowhere. I would not be surprised because I don't. I think they could get a they could get more value by subtraction with someone less caliber and make that yeah. team better. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, as much as I like Ben Simmons, as like I know, I know, I like. I'm not, I don't. I'm not anti Ben Simmons. Yeah. It's just it's like it's 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 become an awkward fit, and. Yeah. I just wonder, like, what Philly could get in return for a ben, for a young Ben Simmons who is due for a massive extension. Like, what could they potentially get for him? You know, and tool around potentially Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid. Yeah, and that's the problem. Who's going to want to take on that? If they have to get rid of him before the extension, and hopefully, yeah. some some franchise that needs a marquee name maybe will pick him up. Um, yeah. Well, that was a quick transition from Butler to Ben Simmons. <laughs> <I know, right? laughs> um, anyone else you want to talk about um, on this list? I gave. I, I started to go down the the bottom of. Uh, I don't want to say bottom of the barrel, but le- less high name free agents. So, uh, yeah, no, throw it out there. Uh, it two. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, we've gone through all of like the stars. Let's just. Get- like someone who's a complete afterthought right now. Yeah, he uh, is. So does he ever – do you see him ever becoming fantasy relevant again? Ah, uh, no. No, yeah. No. I, I just – look, uh, again, I'm not anti-Isaiah Thomas. I, I – I, you know, it's, it's a shame what happened to him with Boston. It was, uh, you know, just terrible the way he got treated. And, and, and look, I, no disrespect to the situation. They had an opportunity to get a Kyrie Irving. Fine, good, but he played his heart out for them. He blew out his hip when he really shouldn't have been playing. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's just had a downward trajectory ever since. And, you know, he's getting up there in age. And there's an influx of good point guards in this league and and how many teams are really going to be able to give him a a a significant injury risk aging player a lot of minutes on a team that's trying to contend Mm. you know maybe maybe like there's kind of like uh, it's completely an opposite scenario maybe there's like a derrick rose thing like where okay in the right team maybe he gets some minutes and slowly builds up his you know, his cachet again, but I just, I don't see him being like fantasy relevant again for the duration of a season. Yeah. Even when he had that great year in Boston um, on the court, he was not, he was a big liability on defense. Yeah. And the only reason he was on there is because his offense was just off the charts. So crazy. Yeah. And I don't, I don't see that level of offense ever again, unfortunately. So Mm. I'm not sure he's ever going to have a big role on team. Um, it's kind of. Sad. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. kind of my thoughts. Um, he was, he was, yeah, an excellent. You know, it was, it was. A, he's a great story, an absolutely fantastic story, and it's just, it's a, it's a shame that he got derailed. That right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing how things change so quickly in this league, right? Of course, yeah. He's, well, a, but, he's a microcosm of that, and then the Warriors, obviously, and then Kevin Durant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's just big injuries can change things so so quickly. Yeah. Um, my list is empty. Is there anyone else you want to talk about? That was, that was my last I know. Time. It was crazy. You know what? There's here. Let's talk about, we, we got a little bit of time. So yeah. like there's a, a name that really hasn't gotten much traction and I don't know why Nick Vucevic. Oh yeah. I don't like it. It's like, I, you know, Boston was the only team that, there was any sort of rumor or speculation on about him. Maybe I think like Sacramento earlier in the off season, but I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, why is there not a lot of attention being paid to Nick Vucevic? That's a good question. Um, Cause he obviously is going to get, he's going to go somewhere and get paid a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and he's probably going to have a pretty significant role. Um, mm-hmm. And fantasy wise, I think it'll be safe. But yeah, I guess he's just not. Um, he's never been a flashy player, and he's not someone that really fits the modern game as well as other players. So I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. He's not really a household name. I, I, that's a good, I, I, that's kind of a stupid reason. But it, he's just. He's kind. I of, get it. I guess it's just kind of winning the, you know, like it's it's kind of winning second place at the county fair. I guess you yeah. know if you get like Nick Vucevic, it's 
Um, but like the crazy thing is, is that like he was he was outstanding last year. He was absolutely great. Like he was amazing, and he's always delivered fantasy wise. And and again, it's one of those things like you know, twenty and twelve, but he can chip in a three. He'll chip in a block. He'll chip in a steal. Like I mean, he's not like ever going to be a defensive player of the year. He's not ever going to be like this supreme marksman, but he does everything, and he is going to deliver you tr- good traditional big man, elite big man stats. And uh, it, it's, I think his wherever he ends up, I think his fantasy value, you know, it may fluctuate a bit, but I still think he's worth an early investment. But I, I, I'm I'm a little bit surprised that like there aren't more teams that are making a concerted effort to try to secure his services. Yeah, and I wonder why that is. Um, but I do agree with you with the fantasy side. I think his floor is pretty high. Yeah, I think he's got such a solid um, all around game. Percentages are solid and everything like that. That I don't think he, even if he's not um, scoring twenty plus points a game, I think he'll be fine fantasy. Yeah, points. but yeah. do we think this is a function of just him being on a completely lousy Orlando team all these years? I don't know. I mean, you know, a lot of people were like, he's a great player, but he's not worth the money he's going to get paid. You know what I mean? So, which I find so bizarre because, like, so I'm looking at like his his past several seasons, and this is just fantasy right now on a per game basis. This is nine cat where he's finished since all right, last year. He was 11 because this that was his all star career year. Fine, mm-hmm. 11. He probably won't replicate that, but that's okay. But here's where he's been over the last six seasons of his career on a per game basis. 26, 48, 27, 22, 37, 34. That's nuts. It's, it's probably the, nuts. Yeah. Like that is guaranteed money in the bank for a guy like, I, I mean, he was falling in drafts last year and like, and he turned in that season. And I guarantee you he's going to fall in drafts again. And he's he's a guarantee for fantasy delivery. And now, like, I know that fantasy and, and rea- real basketball aren't the same thing. But that's a that it's surefire production. And I don't, like, know why that there isn't more interest in the guy. Yeah, we'll have to find out where he ends up and who wants him. Yeah, it'll be another interesting dump. But again, it might just be like it's a star league. He's not quite a star. And until guys like Durant and Kawhi and all those guys are settled, then maybe the interest picks up steam in, in, in Vooch. Yeah, and I also think his interior defense is maybe a little lacking, and you kind of want yeah. that in your rim protector. But anyway, right. I, I, I'm not enough of a, fan, of a reality basketball expert to understand that. So, <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, you know. I can look at the numbers on fantasy. The actual reality of understanding the game at that level is well, fantasy. He's money in the bank. Basically. <laughs> totally is. Yeah. I would trust him hundred percent next year. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, here, 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 one more good one. Yeah. Okay, now here's an I uh, a name that we thought was obvious, but now all of a sudden isn't. Clay Thompson. Oh, Clay Thompson! You think he? Does, you think he may thought, not come? Is, now, he, is he, I, he? He may not come back to Golden State. I heard like something recently that like the Clippers are like a backup plan, huh? For, for the Warriors, it, it, I would have. I can't possibly envision like ninety nine percent certain that he's back with the Warriors, mm-hmm. but I won't go a hundred percent because one, the knee injury, two, the. There is a lot of negative press now coming out about the way that they handled Durant's injury, that the way they handled Andre Iguodala's injury. And I don't know if that is having any effect on him. It might not be. You know, maybe it's just like, no, it's all, you know, just rumor nonsense. But like some of these things were coming straight from Andre Iguodala's mouth. And that's a teammate. And that's, you know, you, you just, you, you don't know. That's that's one of the Hamptons five saying that. So I, I don't know. I won't close the door entirely on just a complete curveball if L.A. strikes out on Kawhi Leonard and 
he decides to stay with Toronto, that they don't say to Clay Thompson, hey, you know, rehab your knee out in L.A. You know, you're also, you know, you're also a West Coast guy, L.A. guy. Like, come, 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 come back home, man. Like, well, you know, we've got a great team. You, you know, you can fit right, right in perfectly. Yeah, that whole management of injuries might be the thing that derails that entire. A big franchise. deal. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I, I I thought he might go to the Lakers at first because you know his dad played there. Um, yeah. Was a, was a icon there, um, and he's from like you said that area. But then I was talking to Dan, and he just thought his relationship with Curry was so strong they would stick around together. I thought that's what I thought too. I just thought like it's mm. just you know what I, I think the Warriors would recognize the value of the Splash Brothers and would just keep Curry and Thompson together <laughs> for eternity, and. That would be that. And now I, I just I still think that that's the most likely scenario, but I will not close the door on something else. Yeah. All right. One last name. One, <laughs> one last thing. So let's keep it going. Like, let's just, all right. So all right. we haven't touched on Kyrie Irving because just oh. the, the assumption is, is that he's in Brooklyn. And I, I, yes. I think that that's, you know, very fair to, to say right now. <clears throat> and even me as a Brooklyn fan. So now it's a question of what happens to D'Angelo Russell. Oh, I like how you pivoted there. Okay, yeah. I read the D'Angelo. I had no idea the Lakers wanted him again. And I had no idea he would want to go back to the Lakers. Yeah. Is that true? I, 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 D'Angelo, here, here's the thing about D'Angelo. He's, he's a pretty affable guy. Uh-huh. And I just think that he... He's grown by leaps and bounds. There's no question about that. I think that he, just the fact that like he's really deciding ultimately between like New York and LA, I think that's like that's still pretty cool. I think he gets along with a lot of different people from a lot of different parts of the league. And I don't think D'Angelo Russell's a dumb guy by any means. You know, he, I think he he will recognize the value of playing alongside a LeBron and an Anthony Davis. And I think he is kind of that persona that could play that third banana role and, and, and kind of thrive with them. Whereas we'd say like Kemba Walker, probably not Kyrie Irving, probably not, but they need someone, you know, who, if, if LeBron, if LeBron doesn't have the ball in his hands all the time, then who else can kind of step up to the plate? And I think D'Angelo Russell can be that guy. I, I think from the Nets perspective, they got to go for it. So I, I know that there's a lot of talk like, oh, why are you going for Kyrie Irving over D'Angelo Russell? Now, let me preface this. I love D'Angelo Russell. I thought he was amazing last season. Kyrie Irving's a better basketball player, plain and simple. And if the Nets are going to go for it, Kyrie Irving's a made guy. He gets to the basket. He's a better three-point shooter. Like He can create magic when it happens. And D'Angelo Russell was incredible but Kyrie Irving's been doing it for some time now. And I think that D'Lo's skill set will fit just about anywhere in the league. But I think to the opportunity for the Nets to get Kyrie Irving is, is, is too much to pass up. But I think, you know, there, there's a lot of places where, where, where D'Lo could, could wind up. I think the Lakers are a strong possibility. And, and look, Magic Johnson's not there anymore. So, you know, it's, it's you know, whatever bad blood that exists – you know, is, is most likely gone. You know, it's not the same team anymore. LeBron wasn't there. And I'm sure, like, and D'Lo's still young. He'll probably be like, look, I don't mind, like, you know, letting LeBron. It's LeBron. You know, I get to play with the best. So. Yeah, interesting. It has been quite a transformation there. New coach, new management, new players. Yeah. Everything's changed in L.A. So maybe it doesn't have the same stigma going right. back there. And I think, I think it'd actually be a really good fit. I don't think LeBron wants to handle the ball as much this year. And um, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. He probably wants to rest a bit. So. And there's, yeah, there's going to be rest for, again, if, if, if they get three superstars on that team, it's yeah. going, there's going to be rest days for LeBron. There's going to be rest days for Anthony Davis. And there'll probably be rest days for whatever third person they pick up. You know, they're going to want to keep that core healthy. That is an interesting tidbit to end it on. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I'm trying not to make sure you talk. Oh, Josh! Did, did we cover enough back. conspiracy theory? Yeah, I, exactly, like, exactly. No, you, the great thing is, all of these things may be moot in about 
five days. So we'll see. Oh now. my god, I know. Like we're gonna be <laughs> so wildly wrong about things. It's like it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I love it, but I love guessing. I love like the rumor mill and the speculation. It's nuts, and but yeah. yeah. We'll find out real soon, won't we? We will, sure will. And we can talk about the reality once it all happens. Uh, exactly. Where can people find you on Twitter? At Josh Millman. I'm, again, boring name, but yes. at Josh Millman. Well, I'm at Ball with Neil. It could be worse. Think of it that way. Um, <laughs> and uh, with that, I do want to mention that uh, we are, again, presented by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee. Uh, find their products at HawaiianIsles.com or on Amazon.com. Josh, any last parting words before we sign off? No, man, I'm I'm pumped. Thanks for having me. Just, just it's the calm before the storm. This exactly. is what this is what everyone's been waiting for. So you know, well, I'm pumped. Me too. Thanks for listening to Fantasy NBA today. Tomorrow, Adrian will be on with Coach, um, and then we are going to be doing a live show on Sunday as the uh, free agents start to uh, make their announcements. So follow us then as well. Um, Dan Bespers, I believe, will be heading that up. So we will, uh, I'll be on next Monday with him. And until then, um, talk to you later. Enjoy, guys. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.